Chair recognizes the Representative from Lubeck, Representative Cassidy. Mr. Speaker, men and women of the House, every family deserves a family doctor. That's what we heard nearly a year ago when this body took its stand on accepting federal funds. I'm standing up today to tell you how that's working out for us back in Washington County after we failed to expand health care in Maine the first time around. Our rural health care system has been very much at risk, especially since January 1st, because many have been going without seeing their family doctors when we need them most, or when they need them most. I want the people of Washington County to have options for health care, and I will vote to support expansion. But there's more than just people's lives at stake locally. The health of our Washington County hospitals and health clinics is also at stake and depends on this vote. At the Harrington Family Health Center, for example, 25% of clinic patients are uninsured and 33% of them are covered by Medicaid. Accepting the federal funds will provide the necessary health care coverage for many Washington County people who desperately need it, such as Linda Salaroli. Here's how I know her story. There's a place in Eastport, a very funky cafe and bar called the Rose Garden. During the summer and fall in 2012, and also in 2010 and 2008, during the campaign season, I would end up at the Rose Garden in late afternoon after I finished knocking on doors in Eastport. I would ask for a root beer float and relax a bit before heading home. Either Alan or Linda Salaroli, who owned the Rose Garden, would fix my root beer float and ask about the work that I wanted to do in Augusta, the issues that I cared about most. Just on Sunday, both Al and Linda worked the bar and served up a proper St. Patrick's Day celebration. You always find them together these days, never apart. That's what spouses do when one of them is diagnosed with cancer. They go forward together, trying to appear as if everything is business as usual. Al and Linda put on a good game face, game face still always cheerful and mindful of their patrons and their community. But things are different now at the Rose Garden. There's still live music on weekends and chili or rib cook-offs Sunday afternoons in winter, and open mic and poetry gatherings at other times. And the Rose Garden is still a place where everybody knows your name. And everybody also knows how Linda got cancer two years ago and had one eye removed. And then things were good again because we all thought that Linda had beaten cancer. The Salarolis have owned the Rose Garden for 10 years, transforming an empty former shoe factory into a popular place for community gatherings year round. Al Salaroli supplements the restaurant income by working on the side as a carpenter, fixing chimneys, putting on roofs, doing interior and exterior work. He even took a turn as president of the Eastport Chamber of Commerce. Al and Linda are two of the hardest working people I know in Washington County. But although they both still work seven days a week, they can't afford health insurance. As a cancer survivor, Linda continued to get checkups, but since January 1st, in order to receive charity care at the Lafayette Family Cancer Care Facility in Brewer, she first had to show that she had been denied main care. And there's an up to 45 days wait to get a main care eligibility determination. And then this paperwork process has to be repeated every six months. So while Linda was waiting this winter for those 45 days to be told by the state of Maine that she did not qualify for Maine care, she missed an appointment with a cancer specialist because she couldn't afford paying from her own pocket. Three weeks ago, Linda learned the cancer has returned and has spread. She is angry, and Alan is especially angry. Any one of us would be angry too if we got cancer and if we didn't have the health insurance that we get in our jobs as state legislators. I know how Alan and Linda live and feel. Just three years ago, my husband and I were self-employed, just getting by, and also living without health insurance because we couldn't afford it either. 
Frank got cancer and died. We were lucky though because Frank was a veteran and he could turn to the VA in Togus first for cancer treatment and then for hospice care. But the Salarolis don't have any such option to turn to except for the main legislature to ask for help with Linda's cancer. So here I am this morning asking you, my legislative colleagues, on behalf of Alan and Linda Salaroli, to cast your vote to expand health care for Mainers such as Linda. Just like you, she's a hard worker and she's a taxpayer, and like some of you, a small business owner and community leader. And she deserves better. Mr. Speaker, I don't rise often to speak on the floor, but when I do, I stand up for Washington County. And I do so with pride because that's where I live. Six of us in this chamber represent Washington County, in fact, with a seventh serving in the Senate. We can tell you about entire small towns, not just bars like the Rose Garden, where everybody knows your name, and how our four weekly newspapers frequently print photos of five generations of a family. In Washington County, we know that after the Eastern Maine basketball tournament every spring, caravans of cars, honking horns, and fire engines with sirens will arrive back in town after midnight. We love our local beauty pageants, our high school graduations, our 4th of July parades, our countless quilt raffles as fundraisers, our festivals for blueberries and salmon and pirates. We support our American legions that always serve a hunter's breakfast and churches that put on bean suppers no matter the time of year. We turn out for the hundreds for benefit suppers when tragedy visits an individual or family, whether we know them or not. Washington County is all about community. And my personal definition of community is the way we get by. But I cannot tell you how my friends Al and Linda Salaroli are going to get by now if we don't have enough votes to expand health care across Maine. They've already put a portion of Linda's cancer costs on their daughter's credit card. You've all heard about Washington County. We have democratic, demographic differences and we have health inequities with the rest of Maine. You know about our poverty our unemployment, because you've seen the numbers on the Kids Count annual report. So it hurts when others tell our Washington County people to get a job as a way to get health care. Nobody can dare tell Alan and Linda Salaroli to work any harder than they do. What the individuals and families of Washington County, like the Salarolis, share with all of you is that we are all manners and we all believe in a great motto for Maine, the way life should be. I brought the story of the Salarolis to Augusta today. Let's acknowledge, however, that we are not talking only about these two people. Al and Linda are two of the 70,000 Mainers who have a similar story. They and 69,998 other Mainers are waiting 10 days, 30 days, 45 days to get the health care they deserve and need. They and we have paid our taxes into the federal system in order to have these basic needs. Meanwhile, they get sick, they live in fear, their lives are ruined, they get sicker, and they die. Today is the day we can do our jobs as main leaders, leaders with the power to cast votes and to rise to a higher hu level of humanity in Maine. Today, 151 of us can make this wrong right. Today, we can lead the way toward Maine. We can lead toward health care solutions for 70,000 Mainers because every Maine family deserves a family doctor. Tomorrow, Linda Salaroli really discovers her fate when the newly discovered mass on her liver is removed and biopsied. We hope it's not too late, and we hope that our system hasn't failed her. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.